Good morning, brothers and sisters. Welcome to the house of the Lord. As you see, today we have another performance or presentation from TK to second grade. So we are looking forward to it. And then also today is a Holy Communion Sunday. So if you would like to take a Holy Communion, you need to have the same belief with us. First of all, you need to be baptized. Secondly, you truly believe that you are not taking the bread, but also the body of Jesus Christ. Not just the wine or grape juice, but also the true blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you share the same belief with us, you are encouraged to take the Holy Communion with us. As our good tradition, please rise and greet one another and share the peace of the Lord. Okay, please have a seat. Today we are going to talk about the preparation of John the Baptist. So we are going to sing some songs regarding to his preparation. Let's sing our opening hymn on Jordan's Bank, The Baptist Cry, 344. rise In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Thank you for being here with us. 
O Almighty God, merciful Father, Brothers and sisters, upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. In the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I therefore declare that all your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with spirit. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, O Lord, to make ready the way of your only begotten Son, that by his coming we may be enabled to serve you with pure minds. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please have a seat. Let us read and listen to the word of the Lord. Good morning, everybody. The Old Testament lesson today will be for the second Sunday in Advent. It will be from the 40th chapter of Isaiah, beginning at verse 1. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is ended, that her inequity is pardoned, and she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry. And I said, What shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all its beauty is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows on it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Go on up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good news. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good news. Lift it up, fear not. Say to the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Behold the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. Behold his reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will tend his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms, and he will carry them in his bosom, and gently lead those that are with young. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle today, today will be from the uh, third chapter of Second Peter, beginning at verse 8. But do not overlook this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient towards you, not wishing that any shall perish but that all should reach rec repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a roar, 
and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved, and the earth and the works that are done on it will be exposed. Since all these things are thus to be dissolved, what sort of people ought you to be in lives of good holiness and goodness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set on fire and dissolved, and the heavenly bodies will melt as they burn. But according to his promise, we are waiting for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you are waiting for these, be diligent to be found by him without spot or blemish and at peace. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John appeared baptizing me in the wilderness and proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And all the country of Judea and all Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist and ate locusts and wild honey. And he preached, saying, After me comes he who is mightier than I, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please have a seat. Now it's time for the children's choir.
Yeah, go ahead and... Okay. Now all the rest of the children, please come forward for children's message. Christ of Christmas. We need to look into our hearts and ask God 
day of our lives. Okay? Cool. Okay, let's ask him to do that now. Let's pray. Dear God, we want to be ready for the Christ of Christmas. Prepare our hearts for his coming. Thank you, Terry. Okay, let's sing hymn of the day. Comfort, comfort ye my people, 347. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Today is the second Sunday in Advent season. As you have seen, 
that uh, in the beginning of the service, we have lit um, two candles. First candle was a candle of hope. We lit it last week. Second candle is the candle of peace, and also known as the candle of Bethlehem, because by lighting this candle, it reminds us that the journey of Joseph and Mary when they travel all the way from Galilee to Bethlehem. So some people said that, well, the straight distance wasn't that long, right? But actually, back to the ancient time, there was no freeway and no vehicle. Probably uh, the best animal they could find was the donkey. So they have to walk slowly. And remember at the time, Mary, he was, uh, she was pregnant, and then he was a heavy pregnant already. So they have to walk much slower. And then I would say it's roughly speaking 80 miles. So by walking 80 miles, you know how difficult it was. And then, of course, you know the nativity story. When they reached Bethlehem, there was no place for them. So eventually, Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, he was born in a barn, in a manger, in an ordinary people's family, and then he was greeted by the ordinary people the first group of people who greet Jesus was shepherds. Yes, you remember that. That's great. So Jesus, he is the Prince of Peace. And the second candle reminds us that this true peace have given to us. This is beyond our expectation. And then in the Old Testament reading this morning, it also talks about the, the voice in the wilderness, cry, cry to Jerusalem. You know, Jerusalem is a city of peace, too. Salem, shalom means peace, right? So Jerusalem, that is the city of peace. Jesus, he is the prince of peace. He enters into his own city to bring peace. So you see that um, those symbolic uh, meanings are there in the scriptures. It just keep, keep, keep telling us that Jesus, he is the true peace. He is not just a true peace somewhere. He is your true peace. When you are in Christ Jesus, you have peace. Regardless, the environment is changing. You have the true peace in Christ Jesus. So just see the, uh, uh, by reading the Old Testament, we noticed that it was from Isaiah chapter 40. If you know the chapter 39, it was back to the King Hezekiah's time. And then uh, he, showed, he showed off his wealth to the messenger of Babylonians. And then he thought that those uh, people from Babylonia would say, wow, this is such a great kingdom. We need to pay our respect to them. No, 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 that was the wrong idea, right? After he showed off how wealthy he was, what happened? The Babylonians started to think, hey, that's a good place. We need to go to plunder them. We need to go and get our own money back from them. You know, it seems like this is a, relatively speaking, not so strong, but so wealthy country. So after that, peace was gone. So when it comes to chapter 40, God used Isaiah to give them this message. You know, even if something bad happened because of your mistake, because of your king's mistake, remember, God is still in, in charge. And the king, Hezekiah, or any kind of ruler, they are not the solution of the problem. The only solution of the problem is the true peace. It refers to Jesus Christ, the promised Messiah. So last week we talked about the first candle, the candle of hope, also known as the candle of prophecy. So the prophecy refers to Jesus, the Messiah coming. Now the second candle refers to peace, Yes, the Prince of Peace is going to be born on, uh, in the city of Bethlehem. So, in the Holy Gospel reading, it talks about the preparation of John the Baptist. It's very, very interesting here. Let me read this. Uh, Mark chapter 1, verse 1. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. When we are reading this sentence, probably it doesn't ring your mind. But I still remember that when I was in seminary, learning the biblical Greek. And the professor gave us this verse in Greek. He didn't tell us that it was from Mark chapter 1. And then when we are reading it, everybody was confusing. Because 
in this sentence, it says the beginning, the gospel, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. There is no is or that or preposition or be verbs, nothing. It just gives you those terms, the beginning, the gospel, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. So we thought that this was a bad Greek because it, it, it doesn't fit any grammar at all. And then the, you know, by the end of the class, the, the, the professor said, this is actually from the Bible. It's from the book, the, the, the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verse 1. So it gives us this impression. In the beginning, you know, when we read this word, in the beginning, it rings our minds too because it refers to the beginning of Bible. In the beginning, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. So when reading the beginning of the gospel, we notice that it, it has uh, something similar to the beginning of Genesis. And then this beginning seems to connect to each other. In the beginning, God creates heaven and earth. Now, in the beginning was the gospel. The gospel was Jesus Christ. The Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Wow. So when we read the Bible in this way, we know that Jesus is equivalent to the in the beginning back to Genesis time. Son of God was there in the beginning. The Word of God was there in the beginning. The gospel has been prepared in the beginning. It's all in Christ Jesus. And of course, when you believe in Jesus, you receive his message of gospel, you will be part of the beginning. How do I know? Well, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Here it says, If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old, the old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Behold, the new has come. Today, when reading the Holy Gospel, there is another word, behold, here. Behold, the King is coming. Therefore, you need to prepare the way. Wow. So, when reading the Gospel, especially just on the first verse of Mark chapter 1, we see how Mark tried to introduce Jesus Christ. That's how he prepared to introduce this King of all kings, this Prince of Peace. If he comes to your chance, how are you going to introduce Jesus to your friends or to your family, to your neighbors? How are you going to do that? Now let's continue here. After the strange but powerful statement of the beginning, Mark, the gospel writer, started to quote the words from the prophet Isaiah. Behold, I send my messenger before your face who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying in the wilderness Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. So here it says, prepare the way, make his path straight. Now, make his path straight is talking about leveling the ground. So that, you now, when the wagon is going, or um, even we, we can say that when the car is, is passing by, this road becomes more comfortable for someone who is important to come. So this is the reason why those back to the ancient time, they need to prepare the way. They need to make, make the, the path straight. Back to the Old, Old Testament time or the ancient time, when a higher rank officer or even a king would like to travel from one place to the other place, this king or higher rank officer will not say, okay, let's go. No, usually they won't do that. They will need to plan ahead. When they said, okay, I want to travel from A to B, then after the high rank officer have this kind of idea, his servants will start to make the way. They will recruit a lot of people, including soldiers and other people, the common people, and then start to prepare the way. If the way is crooked, they will try to make it straight, as, as straight as possible. If the way is uneven, they will try to make it level. So that when a higher rank officer is passing by, then they, he will feel more comfortable. And it's very important for the king to feel comfortable. 
You know, you don't want to make you don't want to make the king mad, especially when he travel from one place to the second place. Otherwise, the people in the second place will be in trouble. So, prepare the way. Make his straight path. It gives us some impression. First of all, we need to do something before a big event or someone great who is coming. So, preparation is important. In speaking of our life. When we are living in this world as Christians, we are sort of speaking preparing ourselves for a better place too. You know, we need to prepare ourselves to fit in into the spiritual kingdom. So all through our life is a sort of speaking preparations too. Prepare to receive Christ and also prepare to enter into the better place that He has prepared for us. Secondly. When talking about preparing the the way, that means someone who is much much greater, much much more powerful, much higher rank than us, the servants, he is coming. So that's why we need to prepare and make the way. So when seeing this, we notice that wow, there could be a lot of meaning behind it, and then everything points to Jesus Christ. And、that's the idea, brothers and sisters. The Old Testament actually points to the coming of Messiah. The Old, the New Testament actually review the Messiah who has already come. So everything come up together to the center. That is Christ Jesus. That was the first coming of Jesus. Now we are anticipating and preparing and waiting for the second coming of the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Just like um. Uh, the the children's message we heard two weeks ago, first coming of Jesus was coming as a form of Lamb of God who takes away the sin of God, the world. The second coming of、uh, of Jesus is like the image of lion. He brings a powerful judgment, but those who belong to him fear not, because after this we know we are going to the better place. But those who don't belong to him. There will be a fair judgment to them, and then they need to prepare for the wrath of God. We don't want them to prepare for the wrath. We want them to prepare for the blessings of God. So that's the reason why the Great Commission is entrusted to us. In speaking of preparations, it's not just、uh, someone who is coming, so that we need to prepare, but also we need to know that where. To prepare, where do we receive this message? The Bible says that it's the voice from the wilderness. Why not from the palace? Why not from the city? Why not from the university or some other places? Why? Why was it from the wilderness? It gives us a lot of symbolic meaning too. First of all, the message of gospel. It's not from our busy life, or in, or maybe maybe we can make it a little bit more specific. The message of peace cannot be found in our busy life. It is from something else, someone else. So that's why in the wilderness, when you, when you, when you make yourself silence, when you start to meditate on the word of God, then you notice that well. God's voice is very loud and clear through those prophets. Even if they are not welcome in the city or in the palace, they still speak, speak to the wilderness. And then, when you quiet yourself, you will listen to this message, the message of peace. It points to Jesus again. And then, as our our theological understanding, we know that John Baptist. John the Baptist, he is considered as the last prophet according to the Old Testament. So when he comes to prepare the way, he fulfilled all the prepare pre- preparations. He started to preach the message of repentance. Maybe you think the message of repentance, well, it it is not news, right? It's it's not something new. But although he didn't know that he was actually doing this, he was part of. The promise. So when he preached the prepar- preparation of,、uh, when he preached the rep- repentance, and also baptized them, 
through the message of repentance, he was actually preparing the way for Jesus. He was actually leveling the ground for Jesus. Maybe in the beginning he didn't know that, but gradually he realized that, oh yes, someone who is greater than I is coming. So he is making this preparation more and more and more until Jesus revealed himself. And then when Jesus revealed himself to John the Baptist, what happened? John the Baptist said, what? You want to come here and to be baptized through my hands? That's something wrong. I should be baptized by you. You are higher rank than me. You know? and, John, and Jesus said to him, we need to do this to fulfill all the requirements of the law. The law. So John the Baptist did this. And then the second day, from the second day, he started to point the crowd to Jesus. Behold, the Son of God, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. You see, the voice in the wilderness, the baptizer in the wilderness, all points to Jesus. That's how they introduce people, introduce crowd, introduce their brothers and sisters or neighbors to Jesus. In this, se- in this season of preparation, brothers and sisters, just like what Terry has, has asked the, the children, are you ready for Christmas? Are you ready to receive Jesus Christ? The same thing, brothers and sisters. How do we make preparations to receive him? Not just in this season or in the season of Christmas, but also all through our life. How do we make preparations for our families, for the people we love and care, to introduce them about this great news, the presence of true peace, Jesus Christ, the true gospel, Son of living God. And the peace of the Lord, which passes all understanding, will keep in guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. Please rise if you are able. Let's confess our, sin, confess our faith by using the Nicene Creed. All together. Please have a seat. Let us prepare our offerings.
If you are able, please rise. Let us sing overtures together. If you are able, please remain standing. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Keep your children from every folly that would turn them away from your word of peace. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Heavenly Father, be the source of strength and comfort in every home. Bless the children of our families, that every darkness would be lightened by your Son's gracious visitation. Sanctify them completely, that their whole spirit, soul, and body may be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. God of all comfort, your word alone endures forever. The nations of this world come and go before you. Even kings and rulers are like grass before your breath. Preserve us from placing our trust in princes and mortal men. Give our rulers who will rule after your good pleasure, keeping order and protection of life, that we may live peaceably in Godness, Christ a quietness and honesty. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Father in heaven, we look forward to a new heaven and a new earth, the home of righteousness. Why now, we contend with a multitude of afflictions under the curse of sin. Remember those in need of help and healing. As we lift up those names in front of you, Lord, Jimmy Chadwick, Debbie Collins, Mark Combs, Henry Cox, Bill Davis and his family, Elisa Farley, Cheyenne Farley, Makayla Corman, Mickey Harden, Alison Kuhn, Dave Lofman, Jean Lake, Mira McCartney, Margus Matulianus, Art Massey, Rene, Renee Moore, Bryce Cynthia, and David Mullen, and all the rest of the names printed in our newsletter and those we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. into your hands, O Lord, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Please have a seat. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, whose way John the Baptist prepared, proclaiming him the Messiah, the very Lamb of God, and calling sinners to repentance, that they might escape from the condemnation to be revealed when He comes again in glory. 
Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Our Father, who art in heaven, Brothers and sisters, our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he gave thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, "Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me." In the same way, also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying. Drink of it, all of you, for this cup is New Testament in my blood, for the forgiveness of your sins. This do, as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always.
They sing Simeon's song together. Give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you will strengthen us through the same in faith towards you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with us Bless we the Lord. To the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Please be seated. Let us sing our closing hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel 357.
would just like to highlight a, a couple quick announcements today. At four o'clock, ladies, is Women's Advent by Candlelight. It's in the gym. If you haven't signed up yet, you can still show up tonight at four o'clock. It's a wonderful worship opportunity, so please uh, come join us this evening. Also, uh, our school has been supporting the uh, Pomona Assistance League for families in our area that are struggling financially. We have signed up to help 25 families. Mrs. Hobbs, Nancy Hobbs, is coordinating this. So as you leave, you're going to get a flyer with a QR code. These are the items that we need, the families that we've signed up to support need. So you can use a QR code. It'll take you right to the Amazon site so you can purchase something off the wish list. If you have Amazon Prime, it'll get to our office by Monday or Tuesday. We need all the items by Thursday at 4 o'clock. Go ahead. We're good? Or something else? Okay. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thank you.